Hi, and welcome back to the Programming book, Bootcamp. Hi, Laura. Hi. Uh, in this episode, we are going to talk about something I call standard modules. It's just a quick overview of uh, about uh, a couple of uh, packages that are available for, uh, um, for Python. Let me share the screen. Right. So just the opening slides and uh, chapters and here it's actually called Python standard modules. Um, so some of the things we have already seen, uh, we, we saw the sys, uh, sys package basically, modules packages. I, I used uh, interchangeably the words. So sys is uh, what, we, what I call system specific, so Python system. OS is the operating system specific things. Stat is uh, whatever I know table doesn't really matter for general generic programming. It's low level um, uh, file system thing. SH util is come it comes from I guess from shell utils. Uh, it's um, slightly higher level file related functions like copying files and things. We'll see the, those. Uh, glob is used for um, listing. Um, files that you are uh, that you have in the directory sub process allows you to run other programs from your python uh, program uh, arc parse is a, is a is a well actually we don't won't see that but uh, it has a separate chapter but arc parse it is is there for um, command line parsing so you we have the sysrv that you know but that only provides you the list of all the parameters that user gave. Um, if uh, you would you have a, a more complex, uh, a complex, not a more complex, a complex command line op options, like uh, various flags you can accept, then um, going over sysargv is just a lot of work, uh, but there are other packages, specifically argparse, that allows you to define exactly what kind of parameters you are expecting and then parse them and without a lot of work from you. Um, and we can go over that chapter separately later on. RE, we saw that regex says math for mathematics. Uh, time is for various time related things. Date time, in more complex time related uh, things, random modules. So there are lots of other modules, lots of other packages. I just had a list here. Uh, Still, I have the download here. Um, okay, so the sys package, uh, you can import sys and then you have sysargv that we saw. It's a command line arguments, um, sys executable, that's the current Python interpreter. So where the Python exe is, or if it's not exe, then whatever it is. Um, I mean, in Linux, it's not exe. The sys pass is um, where Python is going to look for packages. So that, that's for the import. Sys version info that looks like this, something like this. So it's the version information about Python itself. And then you can say sys version info dot major and that would be like two or three. The platform, which would be either Darwin or Linux or Win32. Um, even if it's Windows in 64 bits. So that's, that's always Win32 on Windows. Uname is a, is a more detailed version of what you get. Actually, let's let's try this. So, I uh, what is the name? MySys. So it's in uh, subdirectory that I call sys and MySys. So yeah, interesting. It's either it's so old that uh, in, it's only in Python 2 or in Windows you don't have it. Okay, because uname is that actually that's what I wanted to, to see uh, if um, the Windows has the uname, but now that it doesn't, uh, if, 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 if what, so I wanted to see what, we, what will Windows return here. And uh, the fact that it doesn't return it, I'm not sure now that it doesn't exist or uh, is just was moved some some other place. In, in any case, this uname thing, just to, to, say, to show you, 
Uh, it's a command on, on Linux, you name itself a command that gives you detailed version of the kernel and what not the operating system, what version, so. Standard error. Um, you saw it at, in one of the examples and then we talked a little bit about it, but um, uh, let me just expand on it. So here uh, I have a print uh, that prints out just regular print. And this will go out to what we call the standard output. And then you can print out to the standard error either by saying this. So you say file equal to where this is standard error or by saying sys.stdr write. In both cases goes to the standard error. If I go now, let, let's look this, let's run this Python stdrr. If I run this program, you don't notice the difference. We don't notice the difference. They both on the screen because by default, they both go to the screen. And then this is also slightly different in Linux and Windows, but um, uh, let's, let's try this. So with this greater than sign, I can redirect the standard output to let's say it's some file. So let's say out.txt. I was just trying to make sure uh, that it doesn't exist. Okay, so what happened here is that whatever this program printed to the standard output went into this file and the standard error went out here. I could also do something else. I could say two and uh, some other file name. I, it can be the same file name, okay? So it's just to show that not the file name matters but the, the greater than sign. So if I say two greater than, then it's what, what we call channel number two or the standard error. And this is basically, I think if you, you could also write one here, but I've never seen this happening. So I, so now I redirected whatever this prints to the standard error to this file. And what you see here is the standard output. And then you could also do it uh, like this. So, oh, and, and just to show you, if I type what is in the out txt, it's whatever was printed to the standard error. So it's saved there. And I can also run this now. So let's say I say that the standard output goes to the out txt and the standard error goes to the er txt, just to give two names. And then now the, the output is empty because both channels were re redirected. If I type what is in the out txt, that's what when, when was printed to the standard output. And if I want to, if I see what is in the ERRTXT, that's what went to the standard error. So this allows the user, I mean, now I'm just the user to redirect the output of the whatever program I got. And as a programmer, this is how I can say what goes to the standard output. This should be the normal, the normal output should go there and any warnings and error messages and any of anything else should, should go to the standard error. Okay, and uh, yeah, so this is, this is the example that works also on, on Windows. That's what we saw. Uh, on Linux, there is something called dev null. This is basically, it pretends to be a file. Okay, but whatever you write there is just gone. Okay, and, and that's the usage of it. So if you, I don't know if there is something similar in, in Windows. So that's the usage of it. If you have a lot of output that you don't care, you just want to throw it away, then instead of saving into a file that just takes up sp space on your disk, you redirect it to dev null and, and then it's just gone. Okay, so you don't, it won't take up space, it doesn't matter. And I would like to see if this works on Windows. So what this does is redirects the output, the standard output to this file. And then this piece says that redirect whatever is in the standard error to the standard output. So basically I merge the two together and all of them goes to the same file. And this works definitely on, 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 on Linux. It's, it looks like this, right? Two uh, greater than percent one. And apparently it works on Windows as well, okay? So, uh, so this is in case you would like to just have all of them together and you don't want to separate. 
and, but you would like to do this, okay? So now you see both sides of this coin. Uh, if you have uh, some pro uh, program and you'd like to uh, save the, the error somewhere. Okay. Um, now in the Anaconda, we are in some directory, right? We are in this sys directory. This is what we call the current working directory. And even if you run something from here, okay? So if you run from thing, double click on something, it will have some current working directory. I don't know what actually. It, 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 I have no idea if it's the directory of where the file is or where Python is installed or some, some I don't know. Uh, but luckily here, we can ask what is the current uh, working directory. So inside your program from the import, from the OS module, I can call the get CWD function and it will return the current working directory of the program. So what is CWD it's called, CWD. And it's in the OS directory. I just created an MS there with the directory, sorry for that. Python CWD. Okay, so it says I am in the OS directory. If I go up one and I type in Python OS CWD, so to reach that program, now I said I am in the examples directory. So it doesn't say where the program is, it says where I am, which is my current working directory. Okay. Could you, could you use this with um, relative or alternative pathway? So it's like if you're in the sys directory, can you still open it? Yeah, so I can run the program from anywhere I want. I just want, I just need to provide the, either the relative class like this and says, uh, you yeah. are in sys, it says, okay. Or right. I could say Python and then I give the full pass. So for example, users, uh, Gabor Sabo, work, no. It's not work, it's not work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Work. Slides, Python, where is Python? Okay, Python, examples, it was OS, right? CWD, it's tiring, right? So I can run it this way as well, it doesn't matter. Uh, what this, this does is just says where you are. So the, the person who runs the program, it doesn't care. If, if we want to, if we'd like to know where the script is, then you might remember we had this relative path thing to how to find the relative location. And we had the, there we called OS. I think I even had it in the slides, maybe not. So we have this OS uh, pass, ups pass. Yes. And it will give you the absolute pass. And from there you can, you can know where the file is that's currently uh, being used. Okay. Uh, so this is what how to do how to uh, get the current working directory, uh, which is uh, I, I put it pwd because this is the command inside Unix. So people might know this uh, this way pwd. It's called print working directory. But uh, inside Python, it's is the get cw function. Okay. And you can also use the os change there to do change directory. So what I did here with CD something, inside Python, you would call OS change there to do the change directory, okay? Because you, maybe some other program, part of the program assumes that it's in some location or assumes that relatively to it, there are things. Usually not very good idea to do that, but that's how some programs are written, so. And okay, this is, these are not scripts, just examples. So OS make dir, mk dir, you give it a pass, it creates a directory. So just as in the command line, you could say mk dir, hello, and it created a directory called hello. Okay, just as, as you would do here, right click and new folder. Basically, that's the same thing. 
And um, sometimes you would like to, let's say you have a program, reads an Excel file and, and creates, needs to create lots of results and put it in a standard directory. That's just, you're going to create a directory for that. Make dears. So if I try to make dear uh, A, B, okay, what happened here? I'm surprised. Okay, so Windows does this anyway. Okay, Linux wouldn't do that. Uh, Linux would require an extra parameter to create the subdirectory. So if you don't have the parent, it won't create the tree. Okay, uh, and this is what, what happens here basically. So MKD wouldn't create if you had a directory. So if you would like to create something in something in something, and one of the one of them in the in the parent doesn't exist, then the MKD wouldn't work. MKDs make dears would prepare all the directories on the in the way. So it's like a whole tree. Can you can you make parallel directories? So like with one, without having to type in uh, OS MKD multiple times. No, I think you you just you just need to call it twice. Okay. 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 Uh, OS remove can remove a file. OS unlink is the same, just for historical reasons. They have two names. Um, RMD re would remove a directory, but only if the directory is empty. And remove dears would remove the whole tree, but I think still if all of them are empty except of the subdirectories. And if you really wanted to remove the whole tree that has all kinds of files in it, then uh, you would use the sh util rm tree. Okay, and but then if you give it a pass, then everything is gone without asking questions, just gone. So be careful with this. Okay, in Unix, it you would say rm minus rf on the command line. So what I'm saying on Linux is the these commands work the same both Linux and Windows. I'm just having here examples. Um, I, I guess there is rm dear rm dear. I don't know. I don't remember the exact command. There are similar commands inside Windows, but um, well, once we are in Python and we write Python code, then we only care about how it's written in Python. Uh, we saw that uh, that the OS can give you the OS name. Uh, it says POSIX now, <clears throat> and the platform can give you Linux and and more details. So let's see if how does this give what does this work do in Windows. It says which OS, wrong directory, Python, which OS. So this is what it says for me in Windows. It's NT and Windows NT. I don't know if you remember, that was like the first, one of the first versions of Windows. It says Windows and 10, okay. Um, Probably not, none of these are very relevant for your type of programs. Um, okay, so each program that runs has a process ID. Um, let's try it again also in, on Windows. Python get PID. Okay, so these are the numbers of the processes that running. And if I run it again, you can see that the first one is changed, the second one didn't. So the first one is the process ID of the Python process that was executed. And the, the second one was the get parent process ID, which is the process ID of this window. Okay, because this is, itself is a, is a process. Everything is a process. Everything's running is a process and it has a number. Okay, so in both cases, the parent was the same. And then, and then I think, let's try, let me try to figure it out. Uh, uh, process, view process info. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Really in this, no, 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 none of these I am interested in. How did, what did I, where did I get? I, I don't see that that's what I wanted. Process, this is what I got here, yeah. No, this is just the configuration of my uh, computer. That's not what I, want, I wanted. 
Okay, I'll 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 figure it out. No, I, I Windows. It's I think it's in Windows. Windows system maybe. Task manager. So I probably here somewhere you can see on each process also its ID. Okay, so this is the Windows thing to show you all the pro information uh, about the process. Okay, we should actually see this once. We'll go over this. Um, uh, okay, I don't know how can you get it on Windows in Unix, in, in Unix Linux. This variable outside contains the current process ID. Um, no, I don't know. Okay, so I don't know how it's, you get it in Windows. It doesn't matter. So in, from inside the Python, you get it this way. OS pass. This these ones we already saw. So OS pass base name. Yeah, dear name, so that this is just the name of the file. This is everything except of the file. Ups pass to the from the beginning of the file system. OS pass exists can check if a file exists. Uh, is dear can check if this thing is a directory. Actually, I wanted to check this code expand user. Um, let's try this one. So I wanted to check this one on on uh, Windows. So I. For this, I run Python, import OS, and then I can paste this code and it, well, it worked. So the tilde, tilde, yeah, this is the tilde. This is a, at least in Linux, but maybe it's also Windows or maybe it's only Python on Windows. So maybe just Python knows the, about this in Windows. So the tilde is the, is the nickname for your home directory. Okay, so everyone calls like I. Okay, so it's called tilde, and this OS pass expand user can get uh, the pass of the user, so it's the home directory, and uh, so apparently it also works on, on on Windows. Okay, and that can help you get the home directory. So for example, and um, sometimes. For example, you would like you want you have the program that wants to um, um, create. Uh, you have this game, and you want want you run the game, and you would like to save the high scores. And where would you save it? If you save it in the same directory where the program is, then if someone moves the program, then the that data is lost. So in many cases, people go to the home directory and in there they create a hidden directory and there they put all kinds of, of this information. So they can always find it no matter where it's, the program is being executed. And that's, that's for there is quite useful to be able to access the home directory of the current user. Sometimes you need to go over the whole file system or a, 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 sub, a tree, a subtree and you can, of course, you create your own recursive function. But Python provides us something which is called OS walk. You give it a pass to some directory, and then you iterate over with three variables, uh, which will contain the various information about the current uh, directory. So the relative pass of the current directory that's going on uh, through. Uh, all the subdirectories that it has, the, the first level subdirectory, so not the tree, just the first level, and all the files that it has in that. So now, but it, it, it itself goes on recursively somehow everything. And now you can, we only need to deal with the current files or current directories. Okay. OS is joined with so that it puts in uh, uh, now this is in Linux. And in Windows it puts backslashes. Okay. So in, in Linux it puts slashes, in Windows it puts backslashes. 
uh, what is in the directory. So well, the work helps if I want to go through the whole tree, but if I just can't care about one, one level, then I can use the OS list dir, give it a pass to a directory, and it returns me all the, and it's not fast actually, it's all the things that are there. Because there are other things might be there, it can it might have subdirectories, and it, these are all listed there. And just remember that whatever you get here is the short name. So that's the, just the name inside that directory. So if, if I gave it a directory somewhere else, I get back the short name. In order to access that thing, I have to join together the there and, and the short name. And that's why I'm putting here the pass there and the name, and I'm joining them to get together with OS pass join. And that's where I get how I get to the ac access to the actually whatever that is, directory or file. <clears throat> yeah, so here is the example to have the expand user. I should realign the slides because I, we already tried that. Another way to list the content of directories. So the list there it just gives you the everything that's in the directory. Sometimes you would just like to get all the files that end with .py. And for that, you be, there is another module called glob, and it has a function called glob. So it's glob glob. And then you give it what we call a white card. So it's star.py, for example, says everything that has a .py extension. And you could also say a pass where it has, let's say, star. So the white card has star for everything, a question mark for a single character, and you can put also square brackets to have a selection like a character class, okay? But these, just remember, these are not regular expressions. So the star here is itself alone says anything, okay? And the question mark itself alone says a single character. Okay, so let's say you would like to run an external program. Uh, I don't have good examples here because I don't have any other ex ex external programs except of the standard ones, which is ls minus l in Windows and in Linux, it would be dir in Windows. But just think about that you might in your lab, for example, have some program that someone wrote in some language, you don't care about the language, you don't care anything. Uh, it's just a program for you and you would like to run it. And of course, if it's a GUI program that someone needs to later type in things, then there's no point in running it from Python so much. But uh, the other program might be also a command line program that uh, let's say runs a machine that does something or takes some data that and converts that. It's, and someone already wrote it and you don't care. You just want to run it. There are several ways to do that. Uh, the simplest way is just to say OS system and whatever you would put on the command line to run that program. Okay, and yes, for that you have to understand the, how these things are executed on the com command line. So it's not less useful for <clears throat> these Windows applications. Okay. Uh, another way is to use this subprocess module. Okay. What we have here is a program. Uh, ooh, what is this example? I don't even remember. Yeah, so this is a program that just runs slowly. Okay, it does, the whole point is just sleep. Okay, I didn't show this time thing. Okay, maybe it's, uh, somewhere later we have the time. The order is not really good. Okay, so just sh let me show you at the time quickly. Uh, the, the time module or pa time package gives you time dot time, which gives you the time uh, since the creation of the world in seconds. Okay, that's uh, as you know it. It's uh, January the first, nineteen seventy. Okay, in the Linux computers, Unix, Windows, whatever. I'm not even sure what uh, Windows gives you here, uh, but what's more, in, what, what what you use this for is that you might take twice the time and then you check what is the elapsed elapsed time in seconds, and then in dot so it's in microseconds or whatever it is. 
time time zone gives you the time zone in seconds. Uh, so if you give if it gives you seven thousand two hundred, that means two hours ahead of G, of UTC. Okay, it's not GMT, it's UTC. So it's the right. <clears throat> I think so. And it has it has to give it in sec in seconds and not in hours because there are areas in the world that uh, don't align the hours. So their their time is somewhere in the middle, in half half hours, the time their time zone. And then there is another option to ask whether there is daylight saving time in your computer. Okay, and that would be either true or false. And based on this, you would supposed to be you know what time is it it is right. Uh, GM time gives you some structure of the. It says Greenwich, it's GM because of Greenwich Mean Time, but it, I think actually it's UTC. And if you ask what, I think UTC is, is fixed and the Greenwich Mean Time changes with the, uh, with the daylight saving. Okay. I think that's the difference. Uh, so time, GM time uh, gives you the, T, and then you can say TM year and gives, gives you the year. And you can also do this. So you can say time dot strf time or string format time and use all kinds of these magic variables that would say this would mean four digit year. This would mean two digit months. This means two, two digit day. So if I run this program, it's called other, it's in this directory other. And it's called a my time. So it looks like this. It's just a well formatted date time thing. And you can actually look for SDRF time. SDRF time. <clears throat> uh, this one is, is the Python one. It's a it comes from C, okay? And the uh, languages add their own extra features. But here is the set of the percentage sign and what they mean and how they look like. So you can create your own date format, okay? And uh, time dot sleep will just sleep as many seconds as you give it to. Okay, so this example just shows you that here I take the start time, here the end time, and in the middle I sleep three and a half seconds. And then you can see that the elapsed time, which is the end minus start, is quite close to three and a half seconds. It can't be exact, but it's quite close. Okay, now let me just, just go back for a very jump ahead. Yes, yeah, so this was this slow program that was running using time to sleep a little bit just to make it, it slow. And then this is the, the longer pro pro program that runs the other one. Okay, so this is what we are going to run. So the sys executable, if you remember, that points to the current Python. And then slow is the, this program. So I basically say run this program and give this as a parameter, as you would type in Python and slow.py. This is the command. And before actually I show you this, I go back one slide here to this one. So to show you why, why I'm using the other one, why, why I'm using the more complex one. So this one, if you run this program, this will wait till the, the, the program here finishes. So if the one, that one is slow, my program will wait for it. Sometimes that's what you want, okay? Sometimes that's what you need because you just want to, that thing to finish and then you do something else. But uh, sometimes you would like to run something and then in the meantime, do other things. Maybe you would like to run some of, several of these. And then, uh, and it's especially useful if you have multiple cores 
and then each one can run on it on their own core and then uh, the end time is going to be much shorter the, the whole time because they were actually working in parallel okay so this is the slow one and here i use the sub process module i uh, call the p open or process open command i give it to uh, the pro command but in a list format so i don't give it a, as a string but all the pieces are in uh, separated and I also, what I did here, I also mapped the standard output of the other program to what, I, what we call a pipe. And the standard error also to a pipe. That's gonna be interesting because I would like to know what the other program printed out. So again, let me go back here. Here, this, whatever this ls minus l prints out to the screen will be printed to the screen. My program doesn't know about it. It's just printed to the screen. In this case, I'm going to capture it and my program will know it and it won't be printed to the screen. So my program will be able to look at the output, the printout of, the, of this external program. So this is, this is how I run the program. And then here is, or basically this, this is what runs it, I think. So here I say proc dot, so proc is what I got back here. And then say dot communicate. And I think this is actually what runs the program. And then uh, whatever was captured in the standard output is returned here. And whatever captured in the standard error is returned here. So, um, right, so actually not this one, okay. So uh, you can get back the output and the errors, and then you can print them out, okay? And here I don't have the example how to run things in, in really in parallel, it doesn't show you, but basically that's that's what what happens here. Um, yeah, so this is a slightly more complex example. Here um, I uh, run uh, uh, the programs and then I start polling them, and it checks if. Uh, so it, it, they run the program and then start, start pulling it every apparently half a second, okay? And here I'm doing a sleep here because I had no other things to do, but in a real world situation here, you would do other things maybe, or you would run two of these in, 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 in parallel and you would pull, pull both of them and check which one is finished. And then you go on, okay? So that's basically, I, I won't go into this, I'm just showing that you can do things like it to run several programs, other programs in parallel, and then um, use the CPU to its full power. This is what uh, in the PyCharm uh, chapter we saw that there is this OS environ, which is a dictionary of all of the environment variables. And then you can do anything what you would like. You get the keys get one of them, change one of them. It won't impact the system, but it will impact uh, the rest of your code. Yeah, this is just an, an example showing that I, I, it's not that important, okay? Especially because it's in, it's in, uh, it's only, so in this case, I'm running things that should be running on Linux. The shutil I mentioned is that can copy a file uh, or copy a file, a directory tree or move a file or the remove tree that we have already seen that can remove a whole tree. Time we went over. E yeah. Not that interesting. It's just measuring how some process, how much time it took. It's not that interesting here. This is much more interesting. So the date time uh, pack package that has itself has a date time sub package, which has the tools. For example, it has the now function that returns uh, some object that represents the current 
second. And it's an object, so it's, it's, uh, you can do with it all kinds of things. You can print it out and then you will get back something like this, which is day, I mean, date, hour, and uh, microseconds, whatever. The type of it is called date time, date time, and then you can access all these values of it. So you can know which year, which day, and so on. And you can also use on it, it, it also has this, this SDRF time which has also the exact same signs. Okay, so you, you, here is a year, month, day, whatever format you would like to create. Okay, just to, I have a couple of examples here. Um, often happens that you have some uh, file that has dates in it, and you would like to know what is the date. But uh, every program basically writes the date in a different format. It's like as the pastime of all the programmers to come up with all kind of incomprehensible date formats. But the English and the Americans also problematic in it by themselves. So the only people who know how to write correctly dates are the Hungarians actually, because they write according to the standard, the ISO standard. So, but it happens that you will encounter these files that they have strings in there with different file formats, with different date formats. So how can you convert, how can you understand them? And date time has this strp time or str process time, I don't, parse, parse, I see parse time. Uh, you give it uh, the string itself that contains the date and you give it uh, how, what is its format? So if it's if it look if it looks like this, so four digit year, two digit months, two digit date, and then you give it uh, this formatting, and this is the actual value, actual string. Then from this data, it can create you the date time object with seconds and hours and so on set to zero in this case. But uh, this is a date time object. And here I can, here I think I created, this is how the USA date, the, the state dates in the US, um, various date formats. Okay, which one is the, the English is not here, right? The English is year, day, month. No, the, the English, like British people say day, month, year. Day, month, year? Yeah. Someone said year, day, month. Which is like I don't the, know who that is, but that's how confusing. That's really, <laughs> no, no, no. Ah, sorry, sorry. The Americans. Okay, so Americans have. But the other day, way, yeah. Other, other way, but still confusing. So that's they they put the year at the end, yeah. But it's like not in, not decreasing, not increasing. No. Nothing. It's just whatever. Okay. I mean, yeah. For some reason, they think that's cor that's the correct one. Anyway, the the point here, the the interesting point here is that. Once you know how it looks like in that file, file, that specific field, then you know how to create a file formatting, a date formatting string, and then you can use the SDRP time to parse that and convert it into the date time object. Okay, and here I have a different one uh, and a different format, and then it converts to some object, okay? And then from that point, you can use all the, all the tools. So what, is the, what are the tools that you can use? For example, you can have this date time arithmetics. So what can you do if you have two date, dates, T1 and T2 here, that converse to two date time objects? <clears throat> this T is just there for some reason in the, I think it's the standard format actually. But now I have two date time objects, DT1 and DT2. And I can change, okay, what is the difference? Okay, which is the elapsed time. But it's nice that these two objects can have. And then if I print it out, it says three days and this, this many hours and day and minutes and seconds. And I can also ask the dot total seconds that would give me in just that in seconds, the difference, okay? And the other way around is that you have a date time object and then you can say date time dot time delta 
and then give it some difference, like three days, and then it will give you a new date time object. That's the, the change date. <clears throat> okay, so you can do these man manipulations on, 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 on date time object. Um, I don't know why I needed this, but I, at one point I wanted to round the date times because I didn't like I think these mini microseconds. So this is what I did is I take the date time now and then I reduce it by date time time delta and uh, from the date time, the original date time object that I got, I get the microseconds and I mean basically deduct it from the from from D itself. Okay, maybe there is a better way to do it. I don't know. I found this one. So it just makes uh, remove the microseconds. <clears throat> maybe you can just say D dot microseconds equals zero. I don't know, maybe I can do that. Anyway, uh, that's it uh, from some of the standard modules. There are tons of other things, but uh, it's time for a break. Do you have any questions here? Uh, no, not for now. Um... Yeah, I don't have any exercises in, in this. Uh, I just wanted to show a couple of tools. Um, yeah, okay, because they are, and, and they, I'm not that sure that they are very, I mean, I, for some programming, for some type of, of programming, this is really useful because you need to handle this. For uh, bioinformatics, it's less useful, but I already saw people who wrote, used these because they get some file and then they created a, a directory for all the output. And so they, they, kept, they have to use some of these sometimes. Okay. Right. Okay. So thank you for watching and uh, see you soon in the next video. See you. Bye.